Kim, are you in here? Oh, snap. Hi, Kim. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? I can't see yes. you, though. Uh, give me one sec. Okay, and this All is right, um, I see that it's being recorded. Already? Yeah. Okay, is our moderator here? No. Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm glad we're in. I'm glad we're in too. <laughs> it says two. Yeah, that's weird that it's recording already. Oh, can, but we have, we can stop it, it looks like. Oh, there's Hi. Sherry. Oh, I can't. How are y'all? Good morning. Hi. Doing okay. How are you? Well, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Are y'all ready? <laughs> I think so. We, huh? I <laughs> it looks so, like we've, we've had quite a few people in the welcome, um, the welcome session I just dropped out of, so. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. just a couple of check, let's just check on things before we get started. So um, make sure y'all have the right, okay, y'all have the right um, settings. So that's good. And do y'all have any polls that were set up? No. Good. <laughs> there yeah, we go. No polls. I, I can't add all that into the mix right now. <laughs> I completely understand. I completely understand. <laughs> And then um, I don't think y'all are planning to because you have a short session, but are you planning to use breakout rooms at all? No. Okay. No. All right. And it sounds like your audio is working great. Um, do y'all want to make sure screen share works okay? Yeah, let's do that. And also I have, and I don't know if I should give it to you now. I was just kind of waiting, um, but I do have links. We just went ahead and made Google links to the PowerPoint. So I thought, is it, I can put them in the chat or should I give it to you? Because as new people join, they're not gonna have access to the prior chat. Right, right. Yeah, why so don't I'm, you go ahead? Yeah. Okay, yeah, and then I'll make sure that way that's one less thing you have to do. Okay, good. Right. That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> yeah. I was and we did say that. And we did like tweak the slides a little bit since we sent them in initially, so. But nothing that will, that would, I don't think would be major. It's nothing major, just kind of tweaks on our end. No, you're completely fine. Yeah, you're completely fine. Um, do we want to share the resources link too? Yes, I have okay. both. Awesome. And you can, um, whatever is easier, if you want to drop them in the chat and I'll pick them up from there, or if you want to send me an email from Okay, I'm I just sent you, and you want to make sure you can access that. Mm -hmm. It should be a PDF. In the Wait, chat. that's so weird. Why is it? It's, Did you put it in? Yeah, the I link just, opened, but it's spinning. Oh, there it goes. Okay, just okay. I put it in the chat. Yeah. Because yep, it says open. from Kimberly. It has my name on it, on the chat message, which is weird. Well, both of you are, are actually- Yeah, why um, is mine showing up as Kim? Yeah, and it <laughs> seems both of you are logged in as the same person. How can that be? I don't know. So- uh, And I logged <laughs> into my- Recording. And then I'm gonna admit everybody. And we have individuals coming into the room. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. morning. <laughs> okay, good morning, it is 1030. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, uh, good morning. Welcome to the session, Changing the Narrative with Pre-Service Teachers from Copyright, copyright Restrictions to Creative Commons Permissions in OER. Uh, presenters for this session are Dr. Karen Kohler, Assistant Professor in the Department of Curriculum and Instruction at Texas A&M University, San Antonio, and Ms. Kimberly Grootwold, Education Librarian, also at Texas A&M, San Antonio. I am Sherry Ransdell. I'm the Director of Instructional Design Services for San Jacinto College. I'll be your session moderator. 
I will be in watching the chat for any questions or comments to address during today's session. Before we begin, let me remind everyone that a conference survey will be emailed to all attendees tomorrow afternoon after the conference has ended. Please take the time to complete and submit the survey. We welcome your feedback to help plan for next year's conference. So Dr. Kohler and Ms. Grotewald, I believe we're ready to begin. Hi, yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Karen Kohler and we have the fabulous Kim Grotewald here. Hi, everybody. Um, we're super excited to be here and share a little bit of what we've been working on over the past, um, well, really intensely the yes. last year, but it's been about two years in the making, two and a half. So we're excited to share this with you and hopefully um, you can take some things back with you when we're done. Um, so what we're gonna do, I think Sherry's gonna share just, we wanted to cover all of our bases. Sherry's gonna share a link to the PowerPoint is in a, um, a link to it. So you can have that as well, in addition to the one that's already on the platform, um, just so that you can have that in case you had any problems, you know, accessing it through the conference website. And also the know that there are links within that PowerPoint to other things that we'll share with you today. And also there's a resources list as well that um, is both in the PowerPoint and I think Sherry will send the link with you in the chat. Um, also, I just wanted to touch base that since this is a fast and furious uh, 25 minutes that um, any questions that you have, just go ahead and put them in the chat. And then at the end, Sherry's gonna help help moderate and go through and address any of those questions that you might have. So just wanted to take care of a little housekeeping before we got started. So, um, all right, so first, we wanna give you a little bit of background on our crazy story. So uh, I like Sherry shared, I'm in the Department of um, Curriculum and Instruction and Teacher Preparation, Educator Preparation Program and one of the courses I teach is legal and ethics in education. And here's Kim, we were both kind of new to the university around the same time. And she said, hey, I, um, you know, I like to do some in-class instruction. Is that something I can help you out with? I know that in your program, you discuss, um, you go over uh, copyright in your legal and ethics course, and I'd be happy to come in. Yes, come on in, Kim. So we started with that and she came in, did a fabulous job, focused on, you know, copyright, um, fair use and, and things like that. And so then she comes back, she comes get these crazy ideas and she says, hey, I think we can make an online tutorial. She's like, I'm going to work on that. Great. So she gets this new, tu new software, this new tutorial out there and it's, it's fabulous and thinks, okay, well now we can touch in on multiple sections. This is a section for legal and ethics um, that all, uh, all teacher candidates have to take. So we have multiple sections of it. A lot of our sections are hybrid. So this was a fabulous idea that we could add an online tutorial in addition to the face-to-face -face, um, instruction. So uh, we go ahead and then at that time, Kim and I had some discussions and thought, you know, we really should add in looking, we scoured everything through those educator standards and thought, okay, what else could we add to it that we do just, we need to discuss copyright, but we felt that, um, you know, uh, Creative Commons licensing and OER, this is a fabulous opportunity to go ahead and bring that in. So Kim whipped it up, put it in the tutorial, and then and on we went. And all this was started in about 2018. We moved forward and then Kim says in 2020, before, you know, early 2020, hey, Karen, there's this grant. You think we could do it? Oh, yeah, why not? I've never, I'm still new in my, you know, um, tenure track. I, let's, let's do it. So we write this grant. We start writing this grant um, targeting MSIs to explore and create OER professional development materials. And of course, in the midst of all this, COVID hits. And we're like, are you kidding? Oh my gosh. So everything, as we all know, life changed forever. And so we had to revamp and regroup and it stalled a few things, but we said onward, let's go. So we worked with two other individuals and we created, we did get the grant to create this amazing um, module, which we also, which 
we have shared with you, you have access to that as well. And then Kim says, I think we should research this. Let's go ahead and write an IRB and we can add the tutorial. We could get some more research into this. Um, and we can really have a more of an emphasis on the Creative, um, uh, Creative Commons licensing and OER. And let's, so let's go ahead in short, let's have a pretest to see their knowledge on OER, Creative Commons, um, public domain, fair use, all that stuff and the relationship between it. Let's have a pretest. They'll do the online tutorial and then we'll have um, an in-class session and we'll focus a little bit more on those types of things rather than just focusing on copyright as we originally started. And then after that, the post test to see, did they gain knowledge? You know, where are we at so that we can make adjustments accordingly? So that, so we get all jazzed. We're going through, working through this for COVID. Our IRB goes through. We collected a very small amount of data in one se session last in the fall. And we're going through and we said, okay, great. We can open this up, our research to multiple sections. And we're cruising right along. We go into spring, we talk to all the professors, we get it included. And what happens? Snowvid hits. And it did put us a, put a damper on collecting some more data that we were hoping to have more data to present to you today. But it's okay. We still have some lessons learned and things in, that we want to share with you today. Okay, so I'm Kim Grotwold again. I'm the education librarian, as Karen um, described. Uh, so kind of reflecting on the, the story that, that Karen was telling, it has been a journey of about two years. And we sort of have these, um, what I think of as sort of three products from that journey. So we have this module, um, which we worked on through a grant with the Branch Alliance for Educator Diversity. I wanna make sure to give them a shout out. They're based in Austin, but they do work with um, MSIs nationally. And we, we covered a lot of content in that. Um, so, you know, we were trying to, throughout this journey, we really wanted to refocus the narrative from um, restrictive copyright, you can't do this, you can't do that, to kind of open it up more and make students, pre-service teachers more aware of other types of, of reuse, other ways to use content that um, still are covered under copyright law, but allow for more free sharing of information. So um, the module, covers about four to six hours of time in terms of like if someone were to sit down and do it from beginning to end and kind of explore all the links and all the external um, you know related resources that we pulled into it and really in the in the context of the course that we are working in we we figured out that that was just too much time we didn't have enough to, time to do, have the students do the whole module. So the that's where the tutorial came in. And we have been doing tutorials before. So it was a format that the instructors and some of the students were um, familiar with. They kind of like to get a certificate at the end or some kind of proof that they completed the content and submit it to their professors. And also with the tutorial, there was an opportunity to make it kind of interactive where the students have to respond to the content. So we took this four to six hour module and tried to um, pick out the highlights and create a tutorial that could be done in about an hour and 15 minutes. So um, then we have this other kind of collection of things. <laughs> so as, as Dr. Kohler, as Karen mentioned, um, we, we rolled this out the first time with the pre-surveys and the post-surveys in fall of 2020. And um, with COVID and just some delays with the IRB, we realized that, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of time to, um, to get it out to all the courses. So we decided to do a trial run with just one of her sections. And um, from the information we gathered just from her one section of students, we decided to kind of tweak the in-class instruction 
the synchronous instruction a little bit because we are noticing particularly from the student reflections that they submitted that they really weren't understanding the connection among all the the pieces of content so for example you know that okay well i make a fair use argument if i want to use something that's covered by copyright or that oer builds on resources that are licensed under creative commons or are in the public domain. So they weren't understanding how those things were related. So the first time we ran it, we kind of had an open question and answer um, session before we had students do an application kind of group activity. And then when we ran it again, um, we had a more, like I had a more focused instruction with slides to try to make sure students had a better understanding of the relationships among the ideas. And I should also say that we pulled in visual literacy um, as a way to help students think about their selection of resources to include. And we created some, a, like a framework for that. Um, we simplified this to a great degree because we, we used images as something that was easy for students to work with, find a Creative Commons licensed image, put it in something you're making and create a correct attribution. So it's just very kind of simple. They could do it in hopefully 20 minutes. All right, so we'll go on to the next. And these are all linked, I should say, um, in the PowerPoint. So you'll have access to the to the full documents. Um, so this slide, it's a little hard to see in this um, presentation right now, but in the background, there's an iceberg image. So that's the overarching metaphor here. Um, again, we're kind of into using images because of this visual Im image or visual literacy component that we put into the tutorial. And I think it really uh, reflects the conversations that happen around OER. So the tip of the iceberg, the, the thing that most people kind of focus on most immediately is that OER can remove cost barriers. And in higher education, you know, for our pre-service teachers who are students, it's usually about reducing costs for individ individual students. But in pre-K-12 education, it's about it's more about reducing costs for districts and systems and how they could maybe divert those funds in different ways to support their students. Um, it also, I think, can level the playing field between some of the really economically advantaged districts and less advantaged districts if they can both have access to really high quality OER materials. So as we go down on the iceberg to what's a little bit more below the surface, um, we want to think about what OER does for teachers. It gives them agency. It gives them more control over the content of their curriculum. And we know from education research that students perform better when they um, are engaged in culturally responsive teaching practices and the remixability of OER allows teachers to adapt content so it best reflects their students, their communities, um, and, and relates to the experiences of the students they have. So one level below that, so the most underwater part of the iceberg is what we don't know yet, right? So. We're thinking that if we share these practices with our pre-service teachers, and then they go out into the schools and share them with their students, then when their students become adults in their future professions, maybe they'll be more inclined to share their content more openly or think about themselves as being able to put content out there as content creators and share it. So what have we learned? We learned that first and foremost, that through this, through our everything that, as Kim kind of mentioned earlier, that this relationship between copyright, fair use, creative commons, and OER is still, the students are still struggling with that relationship. It's not quite clear to them. Um, 
We also found that the students are more concerned about um, schools owning their work and copyright. And this came up quite a bit, um, especially when we had the in-class or face-to-face -face discussions um, and a little bit of the light, a little bit of the synchronous sessions when we had to move to virtual, but um, there they related it to when they've done things on YouTube, right? And so they were kind of able to we were excited about that and that they had a little bit of a glimpse of seeing them as content creators, even if it was in YouTube, but that was kind of their background knowledge to relate it to what we could, what OER is and that relationship between all of those things. So we, we were excited about that. And then the other thing is, is that the students um, are excited to learn a, about Creative Commons, especially to search photos and then not, and and also just using Google that there's a drop down that you can go into tools and that you can search even through Google images with the Creative Commons um, filter. And so those are kind of the, the, the takeaways and things that that at the initially that they were that they um, kind of stood out to them the most. So there are some challenges that we wanted to share with you, um, both challenges for the 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 research that we did and then challenges of just OER in general. And so these are the things that we're hoping that you all can learn from us and perhaps, you know, continue the ball rolling, pick up where we left off perhaps to to implement OER and and expose more individuals, more of our our, our higher ed students to it. But one is that we felt that that to really grasp the depth of that relationship um, between Creative Commons, you know, OER, copyright, et cetera, that we really needed to spend a little bit more time on it. We needed to have more time between um, than just doing the tutorial and the face-to-face. -face. They just, it needs, it's dense content when you're first exposed to it, as I'm sure many of you know, and that it just takes time to sink in and really grasp it. Now, generally speaking, if anyone, which here we are at Open Texas, has dabbled in OER and created some things, it takes a lot of time. Just in general, creating something that you feel good about and that you want to share um, and put it out there to be remixed, reused, however you see fit, it's extremely time intensive. And um, so that's one thing that we also is a challenge. Curriculum and alignment, this is something that, you know, we started to do this in our legal and ethics course, fabulous. We did it in legal and ethics, um, in education, and we, we realized though, again, that to get the depth of it, it really needs to be throughout other courses um, or even having professors, instructors reinforce, hey, if you see an image in a PowerPoint or in a presentation or in a lesson plan, the attributions need to be there. Just that's this, the tip of it to start. So that was one of the things is where do we put this in as an educator preparation program and in higher ed with teacher working with teacher candidates, where can we really fit this, this into the alignment? Um, we still see that challenge of our students seeing themselves as content creators. And so I think what we're excited about is Open Texas and the things, the initiatives that we're seeing. Hopefully in time, this will change our perspective and more educators will see themselves as content creators and be thinking about how they wanna share things in the future. Um, I'm seeing I'm, um, time. Time is never on an educator's side and I'm looking right now that we have five minutes. So um, maintaining momentum that, you know, just OER has to always be on the forefront if you want to be really, implementing those OER practices. And so, you know, um, the challenge to that is depending on your institution's initiatives and what they want to do can kind of hinder where you're going, you know, so you have to think about your own organization and your institution. Are they going to be supportive of OER? Because um, where does that fit in as far as, um, you know, those three prongs in academia? So that's something. And then, of course, the virtual setting, y'all, I just, yeah, we can't even go there. So uh, we all know about that. So we don't want to stick that in. So what does our future look like, Kim? Uh, so I think, um, I just saw someone chat, time waits for no one. So I think Karen <laughs> hit on a lot of these. Um, so I think one of the, one of our takeaways so far from what we've, you know, been able to gather from 
our limited amount of data at the moment is that with the content creation piece, um, it was helpful. It was it was encouraging to see students like recognizing and being concerned about, hey, if I put content out there in the world, how can I don't want everyone else to just be able to use it, right? So I think it got their attention, you know, and focused their attention on ownership of content, but it didn't really necessarily shift them to thinking about now that I own this, maybe I do want to share it and control its use that way, but in a more open way. So, um, you know, ownership was big on their minds, not as much the sharing yet. So, but it, it could get there. Um, the promise of increasing diversity is really important. Again, the um, remixability of OER allows for adaptation, but many argue that if you search for OER right now, it's not particularly diverse and inclusive. So I think people who are just reusing what's out there and not doing the adaptation piece are missing something really important. And we really do need to invite the diverse voices into the space where they can remix. So it's, it involves some digital skills. It involves you know, the confidence to be able to make their content reflect themselves and then share that. So Karen and I talked about our collaboration and we mentioned some of the other people and agencies that we collaborated with. OER presents lots of opportunities for collaboration, which is great. So we hope that continues. And then with the launch of OER Texas recently um, and some of the other initiatives happening in Texas right now, we hope there will be continued additional support and recognition for people who are doing this work. You're muted. I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I may seem to wear a shirt that says you're muted. Um, so what's next? That's really a question for you. What's next? Who can you collaborate with thinking about your own institution? Um, you know, what are you already doing? And if you're already doing it, then what's the next step to keep that momentum going? If you're not doing it, what can your next step be? That, that first, you know, we wanted you to think about what could you do? Is it, is it right, a brainstorming list of, of opportunities you could see fit into your program? Is it, um, you know, just starting that conversation? So we just wanted you to take, like I said earlier, just take these things that we've already done, we've implemented, and, you know, hopefully you can springboard from where we left off and, use some of the things even that we've created, um, you know, and perhaps use that at your institution. So um, we also have a list of resources. Kim, you want to share about that? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to take the time to open it up right now because you do have access to the direct link. Um, it's a mix of um, journal articles as well as state departments of education where there are um, are a lot of K-12 resources, OER resources. There are um, our, like the module and the tutorial links to those. And there's also a link to the Branch Alliance for Educator Diversity. So I encourage you to look, check out the work that they're doing as well, because I think they're going to do another OER grant this summer. I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, maybe <laughs> I did. We're out of time here. So. Um, this is our information. If you have any questions, I don't know, Sherry, if we even have time for questions now, we're happy to, to do that. But if not, of course, here's our information that's included if you, anyone wants to reach out in the future. And I do not see any questions in the chat at this time. So okay. I think y'all did a great job. <laughs> y'all covered everything. I'm seeing everybody telling you thank you. I'm seeing applause. Um, and uh, so I think great job. I think you must have addressed um, all the points that they came to see. It was fast and furious, but <laughs> yes, it was. Thank you well, guys then. so much for attending. Yes, thank Appreciate you. It. Yes, thank you for attending. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.